I've turned on the light and I've got the silk paper that I made yesterday right here in front. Now I'm going to show this to you again. Just let you see how thin and ethereal this is. Now it is still fiddly, but the cool thing, if you've done anything with silk and felting, you know that one of the hassles is that any glitch of dry skin or a hangnail on your hands will cause the silk just to spider web everywhere. Well, starching it down helps control that a whole lot easier. You can see that I am moving this from hand to hand all over the place and there are no silk flyaways that are catching my hands like they usually do when we're talking um, using silk. So this is what we're going to do. And I've got the iron heating up on, a, on higher than the silk setting, okay? I'll be honest, it's on more like the wool setting because you need to use a fair amount of heat for this. I've got some hankies here and I have some silk lap and other applications over here. We're gonna do the hanky first. Um, so I've got a piece of parchment paper that I'm using just as a, a quick release, okay? But I found out last night that it took an awful lot of ironing without having a wool pad underneath. So I'm using a piece of felted wool underneath to help absorb some of that moisture as we're creating this um, felted, I mean this silk paper. Now I'm going to pick a different color, I think. Who do we have close? I want to get something that's got a lot of colors in it. And this one, this batch of hankies is a good one. So this is how silk hankies come. Um, silk hankies are basically cocoon after cocoon after cocoon. And you can see how it's just catching on my hands like crazy. They are laid out and they're the cocoons, once they are um, stripped of the sarazen, um, they are washed and put together. I got a little bit of fuzz here. And then they are stretched over a square frame, okay? And that square frame just pulls them into this they're called hankies, I think, because they're in a hanky shape. This has got dozens and dozens of hankies in it, and it's hard to see, but if you look very, very closely and you start peeling out, see each of those edges is a different hanky, and they just like to hide together, something fierce. And so it is really difficult to pull a single hanky off. This would be a single hanky. See how let me move this over. See how very thin that is. So when I'm doing the silk paper, I'm grabbing up probably three or four hankies worth because I want it to be fairly substantial. Now, there's no right or wrong way to pulling this off. It's just finding a way to get them away from the masses that are left. Sometimes, and you see what I mean about sticking, sometimes you need some scissors to help you cut that off. And so the hankies are back in their bag. And so what I've got here is a stack of several hankies. And instead of just laying it down like this, which I could do, um, I want to take and I want to make those edges just a little more blended in to the rest of the hanky. Plus, I've got some of these beautiful colors here that are only in certain areas and I wanna play with moving those colors around a little bit. Mostly, I'm just trying not to have this hard edge, um, which you're going to have because of the way the hankies are created. You know, they're pulled open and they're stretched over a square frame and so those edges are gonna be a little more um, tightly defined than any other piece of the hanky. So I'm just sort of mixing it all up a little bit. You know, making sort of a silk cloud, as it were. Just looking at any of those edges and opening them up a little bit. Any, any deep areas that have got a lot of fiber in there and just turning it around and playing with those colors because the colors are what make silk so freaking stunning. 
And so I've got things sort of wiggled around and you can see, I mean, it just grabs, grabs, grabs. And I kind of like that, kind of like that a lot because it's got a little bit of the orange showing through. And so what I'm going to do is just lay it on top of the parchment paper, on top of the wool pad, okay? Now I'm just going to spray it down with the spray starch. Now it may take a couple of applications of the spray starch before we get enough in there. And now with my iron set on fairly high heat, not all the way maxed out high heat, but fairly high heat, I'm going to run that iron, that hot iron, you see the steam coming up, so we're getting the moisture out, and I'm going to flip it over so I can work it from both sides. Plus, this second um, bit of starch I'm going to add to this other side so that we've got starch sort of um, attaching those fibers together from both sides. Now I did find through experimentation last night that I got to let it cool off just a tiny little bit because it does take a little bit for us to get all of the moisture out and for us to get, you can see even now, I mean, just so much better, but I wanna spray it down on this side just to make sure that we've got that starch holding those silk fibers in place. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna bring the iron over. And basically we are just removing the moisture from the spray starch and allowing the starch to adhere those fibers together so that we have our silk paper. And again, I'm, I just like to iron from both sides just to make sure that each of the sides is nicely flattened down. Let it cool off just a little bit. And as it completely cools, you will find that you'll have less of the fibers picking up along the edge and them staying down. But I had, did find that it took a little bit and it's tempting to, to want to just iron straight on the silk, but I wouldn't recommend it because the, um, the iron can sometimes grab a hold of those fibers and you can see we've just got a beautiful piece of silk paper now. Isn't that lovely? I mean, imagine having lots of these already done up, which is probably what I'm going to do for a good chunk of the day today, um, is make up some silk papers and then put them, I don't know what I'll put them between. I might just have to get some extra parchment paper and put them between parchment papers. And that way I've got these to use and I can cut them up for projects that I'll be working on over the next several days. But isn't that lovely? And look, how thin and no real flyaways. I mean, there are a couple of areas that I could probably hit with the iron again, just to give it a little more drying out time. But truthfully, letting the um, silk paper air dry from this point forward makes it possible for it to just come together so that you've got a beautiful piece of silk paper ready to use in a project. So we have two silk papers now. I'm going to make a third and I'm going to make a third because I'm, these are both hankies. Okay. I use silk hankies first because frankly, that's what I have a good chunk of. I've been collecting silk hankies for years and years, but I have this other bag of random silks and I want to try a little bit of this silk lap that I got from a friend of mine. And I'm just trying to get it out here. I'm trying to figure out how I want to pull off a piece. And for the silk lap, whoops, that's not part of the lap. That's another piece of silk. Like I said, I got silk everywhere. Um, the thing about the silk lap, I love the application of it, but it doesn't pull apart in layers quite as easily. Um, and it's got, the reason I like it as a different application is because it's got a lot more texture. And I don't know why that is. I have not researched the differences between silk hankies and silk lap. Um, I just know that I like it. Um, and, you know, 
when you like something, you like something. You know, you don't always have to have a reason why. But I am able to sort of pull off a thin layer, and I'm going to cut this thin layer off, and that's what we're going to use. See, now, silk is very strong, and it does not always like the scissors. And these are not some of my good um, fabric scissors, which is what I probably should be using, because my good fabric scissors would be able to cut through this without any trouble. But we're almost done. We almost got it here. But you can see the texture difference between the hanky and the lap. I mean, the lap has just got so much texture to it. And I'm going to cut this in half, and we're going to make two pieces here. Set this one aside. And so let's take a look at this more reddish piece. And I can still, you know, spread it out and tease it out a little bit. Um, but I don't want to do that too much because I love the texture of the lap. It just, it's just different and it's beautiful the way that texture comes out. And I don't want to lose any of that texture in making the silk paper here. So I've got it spread out. I like the layout here. I'm just going to spray it down with some of the spray starch. You do need to use enough of the spray starch, and you can, like I'm doing right now, sort of press that starch through to make sure that you get it nice and, and uh, lubricated there. You don't have to. I certainly didn't on the hankies, but now I'm just going to run the iron over and make sure that we've got a fair amount of steam coming up. Then I know that the moisture from the starch is leaving and I can take it, flip it over, iron it from the other side. You will notice your parchment paper is going to get moist, but the high heat of the iron is going to help you tremendously on um, getting that moisture out. And then again, like I did for the hanky, I'm going to take and lift this up. Now, you're seeing a lot of dye come out. The one thing about silks is that the dye doesn't usually fully exhaust when you get the silk. Um, the processing has not been enough to fully exhaust the dye. So don't freak out about getting some bleeding on the um, parchment paper that you're using. That's pretty, pretty standard for dyed hankies, dyed silk of any sorts. The dye just doesn't have a chance to rinse fully out um, after it's been dyed. It will probably deposit some dye to your felted piece, but that's why you're adding the silk in the first place, is to partly add some color um, as well as texture. So I wouldn't worry about it too awful much at all. And then we're just doing the same thing we did the first time through. Now I haven't done this, I haven't made silk paper with the silk lap yet. This is an experiment for me just as much as it's a tutorial for you, um, but I think it's going to turn out beautifully just like the hankies did. And so we did it on both sides, cool it off a little bit. And then lifting off, and let's see if we can pull our silk paper off. Oh my, look at that. Look at that beautiful piece of silk paper. Isn't that amazing? And the texture still shows up with this, especially if you see the light shining through it. You can see that lovely texture. It's just beautiful. So we'll let this one dry and we'll do one more silk hanky with the other, I mean one more piece of silk paper with the other part of the silk lap. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of texture added into some of these differently dyed areas so that you see the texture as well as the color. Again, I'm just, I'm very gentle with teasing apart these thicker areas on the silk lap because I don't want to lose any of that lovely texture. And then just sort of figuring out my layout here. 
and you can get as fiddly with it as you want or just leave it be and then spray it down with our spray starch. Now, silk paper can be used in a number of other projects as well. There are a number of artists that use silk paper in stitching. Um, if you can imagine uh, taking a piece of this and using it in your in a needleworking project, whether it's cross stitch or embroidery, um, you know, think about uh, how much texture and color you'd have there. You'd want to stitch down very well. You might even want to um, stitch down in a grid pattern with a sewing machine with thread that you can't really see before you start hand stitching into it. But just look up silk paper applications and see what you can find out there. It is really fascinating to see this incredible fiber used in so many different ways. And the way that silk just adds dimension and texture and beauty to a felted piece, it's, it's why I collect silk. I mean, it just really is. Um, and this is something that I can see myself using an awful lot of in the future. So much so that, yeah, I'm gonna make a, a large batch of silk paper so that I can use it in my future felting projects. I just, the, the look and the texture and being able to manipulate it without having all of those spider webby fibers clinging in at your hands. I mean, I would much rather spend some time working with the iron and, you know, fiddling with it a little bit to get pieces that I can then cut into the shapes I want to add to a felting project. <coughs> this is one of those things where the prep is totally totally going to be worth it because I'll have so much more control over the silk fibers that I add to projects. I mean, generally speaking, you're trying to get the webs off of your hands when you're adding a silk hanky or silk lap to a felted project. And this is going to make that adding so much easier to do. And there we have another piece of silk paper, another one made with the silk lap instead of the silk hankies. But oh my goodness, isn't that stunning how easy it becomes to manipulate the silk to add to a project. And then, you know, cut out your shapes. You can use cookie cutters, you can use stencils to figure out what your shapes are going to be. Use sharp scissors. I would recommend probably embroidery scissors. Um, I have a, a short little pair of rainbow um, embroidery scissors that I really love and I love them because they have straight blades. Some embroidery scissors have a little bit of a curve to it. I like these straight blades but use you know use whatever you want to create your shapes in here cut it out and then hang on to your scraps and throw your scraps in the background of a felted painting or something. But that is Today's live, we have two pieces made from silk lap, and we have two pieces made from silk hankies, and oh my goodness, isn't this amazing? And such a fun way, yeah, you're not going to be able to see me. Uh, such a fun way to be able to add silk to your wet felted project. So thanks for joining me. Um, if you're a member of the Felted Experience, we'll talk about something special tonight on our phone call. And I hope to see you there. If you don't know what the Felted Experience is, head over to stabthingsintoexistence.com and learn more about it. We'd love to have you join us this fall. So until tomorrow, go stab something or iron something into existence. I'll see you later. Bye.